All right, so today we are talking about uh, the importance of follow-up and then team communication. And uh, William just asked a really interesting question, which was given coronavirus, for, you know, if you were calling, calling, making touch with agents, you know, reaching out to people, and suddenly you might have dropped off the last few months. Um, I won't name names, but I know there's another person on this call who is uh, consciously in vacation mode. That could probably be everybody smiling a little bit, right? We all have <laughs> vacation mode for a little bit. But uh, how do you, is the question, William, how do you pick it back up with the, with the potential people that are, you know, thinking about joining EXP? Or how do you mentally get yourself back in the game or all of the above? All the above. Okay. So, Mike, let's jump in first for you because you, you're the one who, who said, look, I want to talk about follow-up today. Do you have any people like this? Like, what have you been doing to start these conversations back up with people? So, yeah, so I've been, you know, I go, I've, I'm sure you've seen on a million Zooms, I'm supposed to be following up with all the people that I talked to pre-COVID. So I'm doing my homework. I'm following up. How are you? Are you, are you guys opening up? Where are you at with all this? And then I just say, where's your, where's your mind with this? You know, what stage are you in? Are you over it? Are you still scared? You know, I know before we were talking about EXP a little bit and, you know, the, I'm sure you've seen the webinars going around saying that we were built for this. And that's very true. It's, it's crazy how, you know, some people weren't sure about a virtual world and, and, uh, you know, no brick and mortar and working from home and other places. And now all of a sudden, everybody's reaching out and saying you were built for this and you know tons of companies and people are trying to reach out and use our technology and i just you know our company didn't skip a beat and i just wondered how your company went through this and how you are going through this and you know if there was a uh, a better way to work virtual would you want to see it or revisit it and everybody's very receptive. They're like, you know, I can't stop thinking about EXP. That's all I see online is people meeting virtually, you know, all the Zooms and everything. And, you know, we've been doing just fine working from home and virtually. So, you know, it's definitely closer of an option than it ever has been before, you know, and, and, and that's basically the theme. So what I did is every time I talked to somebody for you guys, I put in my phone, EXP lead, Jesse, EXP, Scott Marlowe. And I just pull up EXP lead and I just start texting and, uh, um, and sending video uh, Facebook messages and say, I know I suck at following up. I'm here. How are you? And you know, where are you at with everything? And that's it. And they're just totally blasting back. Oh yeah. I've been meaning to call you or I see you're everywhere. I see you're doing all these webinars and your business is doing good. And, Yep, 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 yep. And let's just go down that path. That's what I've been doing, and it's killing it. But before, I was sucking so bad because I wasn't picking up the phone. It's no different than real estate. <laughs> it's no different at all. Does that answer the question, William? Yeah. The, literally just checking in yeah. saying, where are you at? If it's someone that you had an actual conversation about EXP, and it's been a while since you chatted with them, I, I mean, you got to know the nature of your relationship, but with putting no, without putting pressure on them, I think it's okay to ask them where are they at in regards to EXP, right? Take a pulse and check in. It's not like you, you have to go in for a hard close, but you can start in general and, and just say, hey, you know, we talked to EXP a while back. Is it still on your radar? That's a very soft question. You can text it. You can call. I mean, I like it verbally, but you can Facebook message it. Um, you can just check in. And if you get zero response from that, well, you kind of know where they're at. <laughs> they yeah. might be busy, but, right? But mm -hmm. you, the, at that point, then I let that go and I go back to this building relationship, getting back in, talking about things, how's their business, and circle there. You, you, but you got, if there's someone that you never really went deep with EXP, I, I wouldn't start with that question. You just got to know where you're at with the, the people you've talked to. And a really good script awesome. that's working too is you just say to people and say, hey, if I remember right, you were really interested, but then all this happened. You know, on a scale of one to 10, where are you at now with joining EXP? That's a good so, one. I'm going to write that down. That scale of one to 10, I use every day on everybody and it works. So, so if you ask them on a scale of one to 10, where are they at with joining EXP? Whatever they say, whatever they answer they give you, say, all right, cool. You know, totally respect that. What would make it a 10 or what would make it a nine? Right. And that's your only goal is to continue moving it forward to get it going from, you know, a six to an eight, an eight to a nine, nine, whatever it is. Do you use that as a follow-up awesome. question, Mike? Mm -hmm. Absolutely, with everything. Um, and then whatever they say, you focus on that. You know, 
and what's funny is people say, you know, I, I kind of need to revisit revenue share. I kind of need to revisit the stock or how much were the fees? And that's the way they answer. And then I'll focus on that a little bit. And then I'll use Scott Lewis's script where I say, you know, being in the business almost two years now at EXP, which I love, it gets better every day, but I know there's only two reasons people don't join our company. Number one, I failed at my job explaining it, you know, so you just don't quite get it. Or number two, you're just not into it at all. You're just not into anything, you know? And sometimes if I, if I can speak blunt with them, I'll say, you know, sometimes we're not open-minded or business-minded and that's fine. We all go through stages. And when you are a little bit more open-minded or business-minded, I'll be here for you to chat, right? And then if I really feel like, screw these people, I'll just say, it's either ignorance or stupidity. Which one are you? You know? <laughs> I, I, I thought that was Scott Lewis's script. I was like, I... I, <laughs> but I try to soften it up depending on personality style. Totally. Because I have made people like, that was a dick move. <laughs> you know. <laughs> but sometimes you're just so fed up with people, you just say it like that and just say, like I was telling a guy yesterday, I said, listen, man, I go, I know I'm being really rough about your business. I'm being brutally honest. And you're going to hang up from this call and say, Mike's a dick, but he was right. And he's like, yeah, that's kind of what I'm feeling. I said, well, if you know I'm really right, why don't you just open up your mind and let's have a talk about your business because you can't sustain your business. It's not scalable. You're not working on the right side of the quadrant as a business owner or an investor. You know, in your heart of hearts, you should be working on that side. So why aren't you? You know, and then they're just like, I, I, you know, I'm just so busy. I go, Hey, the most busy people are the most broke. I go slow down and take a look at your business, you know? And, and sometimes those, those little scripts work. And then they're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. When people say that to me, you go, Mike, you know, I'm right. Why aren't you listening? You're just being closed minded. And I'm like, you're right. You're absolutely right. <laughs> and then I'll be open-minded. I think it brings you to like a moment of like truth. Once you've gone through those questions. There's some like inner soul, like soul searching there because I remember we were talking and I think you used some of those on me and I was just like, <laughs> yeah, that's why our conversation was only like 10, 15 minutes. I was like, all right, let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can always ask for permission to be a jerk to them too. Say, mm -hmm. hey, William, can I be brutally honest with you? Do you give me permission to speak bluntly? And then everybody says, yeah, I don't want you to BS me and say, look, pull your head out of your ass. Like, you just told me you want to work it. less, make more money and, you know, have less liability, whatever the case is. And, and why are you fighting it? Is it because you don't want to spend a couple thousand dollars in marketing? Is it because you don't know if your broker will let you take your listings? Is it because you don't know how to tell your friends that you're going to an Amway, you know, Barry MLM company? What is it? Like, just speak freely with me. You know, and then they're like, whoa, dude, like, what's really heavy? Okay. All right. Let's break it down a little bit more. <laughs> I'm going to use that. That's, that's Guess awesome. what mood I'm in today. <laughs> really honest. <laughs> so, so back to follow up. One thing that I started using uh, for the last couple of days, we're coming to the end of it. it was a two month free, uh, you know, pass for people to get access to the, to the all the trainings in the EXP world. And so, so I had sent out a lot of guest passes and I checked in a couple of times, but frankly, I didn't do a very good job of follow up for the last, you know, as much as I'd wanted to, but now it's a good time. We're coming to the end to check in. Hey, did you get a chance to check in? Did you get a chance to check it out? Oh, you didn't? Oh man. And then we can talk about it. I can get an access for another couple of weeks or yes, you did, but you can use this follow up script even with people you didn't send the guest pass to, right? Hey, you know, if you talked to about EXP at one point, did you get a chance to, to use behind, you know, the two month guest pass? Like, oh, I didn't get it. Oh, you didn't get it. Oh no. Here, I'll get you access because you can still get them two-week access, right? If people feel like they missed out on something, they oftentimes want it more. Yep. Mm -hmm. right? And it's a good opportunity to help them say, why didn't you do it? Well, I just didn't know how to do it. And I've had people say, it was just kind of confusing and I didn't have enough time to really try to figure it out. Would you like me to do it with you? We can just do a screen share and I'll help you. You know, and they're like, all right. I did with a guy yesterday. We actually had to go into tech support and they took over his computer while I was sharing my screen. It was crazy. You can do that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, you were in tech support and they took over his computer while you were sharing your screen? That's yes. Crazy. Wow. Yeah, awesome. was nuts. Well, he was sharing his screen with me. Yeah. And I went, I went into my computer and then he shared his screen and they worked on it. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, I'm like, hands off. I was like, whoa, okay, cool. I love it. 
But what have you guys been doing for follow up? I mean, are, are any of you guys doing follow up yet? Do you have a list of people? What, what's working in your world? I was just telling you pen and paper uh, and sending a text. people through the list. So, uh, so go, ahead. go ahead, Scott, and then we'll go to William. Go ahead, Scott. One of the things Rob Flick taught me was just send a text once every week or two about something good that's going on. And one of the things that happened is EXP stock went above $10 again. So you just send that text out. Hey, I'm super excited. The stock's what? up $10. Don't worry, it's 1065 now. Are you serious? <laughs> yeah. Holy crap. Yeah. So any, what? anytime something blanket good happens about EXP <laughs> stock or like, and we just got a big team of 800 from Arizona to join or anything that's good. It doesn't have to be in your organization. Just send it every two weeks or so just to stay top of mind. Yeah. And if you guys are curious to find those things, um, EXP Realty Facebook group posts every day something that you can share like that. And then in the top right of your enterprise, it says something like PR releases or something like that. There's a tremendous amount of cool stuff in there, too, that you can copy and paste and send off to people. This, I'm going to share my screen for a second. This is a really good uh, site for also educating yourself on if you want stories to tell. A lot of us are storytellers in our sales career. So if you want to learn stories, oh, David, look, look our very own David Golden happens to be on the homepage. This is life.exprealty.com. These are stories about agents. Um, if you've never seen these, some of these are, are, have video, some of these are shareable. You can literally read about each of these people. It was what I was hoping they were going to make at some point that you could then scroll through and see, um, you know, if you're talking to an, an indie broker, you want to be able to share some stories about an indie broker that switched. You want talking to a, you know, newer agent, if you're talking to a team leader, they have stories that are kind of broken down and you can see what each person's background was. And uh, then you have some stories of how uh, EXP has benefited these people that are similar to the people you're talking to. Does that make sense, guys? Great. Yeah. Like if you're going to list a $500,000 house in a certain area, you're not going to show them you know, video testimonials of someone who owns a $2 million house on the other side of town. You're going to show them people who are just like them, who sold homes like them. So if you're talking to agents and you're doing follow-up and you're looking for things to follow up. Um, so Brent uh, Conley shared a really good image. I have no idea where it came from. Haven't verified it, but Mike, it sounded true. I apparently 50 independent brokerages have moved to EXP so far this year. 50, five, zero. And he had a little like, it was probably right from workplace. I just didn't, I don't know where it was created, the little image. But if you're talking to an indie broker and we have a couple that we're following up with, you just literally cut and paste that into one of the group message chats and it sparked discussion again. That's great. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm just, kidding. If, I'm just thinking of other resources. If you guys can send that or, or, or if you have any way of sending that to us, that'd be awesome. Because Paul, I know you know a lot of people with independent brokerages and so does Randy. For sure, yeah, thank you. Let me go, I'll go find that image right now. Uh, you probably just scroll through EXP announcements and just scroll down until you find something like that. I've got it still from the other message that we had. I'll, I'll put it on EXP Pros. All right, Mike, while I'm looking for this, what else you got for follow-up? Anything else that's helpful or interesting? <laughs> just the bottom line is it's so weird, but people are afraid to reach out. So they're actually kind of waiting for you to call them because they might feel like they've surrendered or um, they might feel weird, like kind of an ego thing, right? Like, oh, you know, I don't want to have to submit to, you know, Jesse, or I don't want to have to be submissive to Jesse. But when they call you, when you call them, they're like, oh, hey, what's up? I was just thinking about you. I was just talking about you. They're always saying something like that. And then I'm like, well, what if I wouldn't have called? Like, geez. And then there's some people that I've called lately, actually quite a few, because I wasn't doing my job, that said, oh, yeah, well, since we talked, I've switched to Compass or KW or Remax. I'm like, what? Oh, yeah. You know, they made me a deal I couldn't refuse. Like, what? Like a free office? Yeah. I'm like, but did you forget about the thousands of dollars a month that you can make? Like, did you forget about, like, what the hell are you thinking? And Scott, you know, you just had it happen to you too. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I had it happen to me twice. One of the guys was a really big coach out here um, who I was really, really, really good friends with. And I was thinking, hey, I'm going to call him next week. And that week when I was going to call him, he showed up on EXP's roster. Uh, another guy that uh, actually reached out to me, um, Mike Ferry guy. And uh, he was like, 
hey, I just joined EXP. Can you tell me a little bit about what you do to attract? <laughs> and I'm like, oh, awesome. He was like, by the way, why, why didn't you call me? He was like, you know, you're, you're talking about like how you're attracting these like performers. He was like, was I not on that list? And that just, that, so what, that was, so what was your answer. Why didn't you call him? Um, I said to him, you know what? I, I dropped the ball on that. And I said, I'm going to share with you what I do to attract people and, and you're going to win. And I lost out on that, but this was a great reminder for it not to happen again. I mean, we have KB core, right? We should be using it. <laughs> yeah. Mass text, mass email, drip campaigns. It's free. We already have it. Use it. If you guys ever get those text messages from me, that's where it's coming from. Oh, I thought you were sending it to me personally. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. To you, I send them personally. <laughs> but, but only you. Yeah, but, but that's just really, thanks for reminding me, that's just back to step one of making your list and actually reaching out to those people, right? I mean, whether you thought that person wouldn't come or was too busy or you just, you're busy yourself, you know, because there's not enough hours in the day. But the follow-up is hugely important, but also making an initial outreach to people. I still have people on my list. I mean, I have lists upon lists upon lists that I keep looking at going, oh, I really got to call that person. Oh, I really got to call that person. I mean, that's, that's all of us, I think. You just end up having... Yeah. Never you know what I've been doing lately is when that happens, when I'm thinking about, I got to call that person, I'm like, I'm just going to call them now. Like, like that's what I did with, with Simeon, who's, who's the biggest, biggest agent on my list. Like, and I was thinking for like weeks, I'm like, how am I going to talk to him? And then finally I was like, I'm just going to call him now. <laughs> and that's it. Got him connected with Mike. And that's the one who just joined? No, but he's, he's going to join. He loves EXP. Awesome. Loves it. Yeah. All right. Awesome. Well, I don't want to beat follow up into the ground because we, we're only going to go to about uh, 45 minutes after the hour today. Right? Right, Mike? I, yeah, I'm going to have to get ready and take some notes to get on Carrie Scholl's event thing. But what I was going to say before I forget is Ricky Carruth yesterday was on Megan Farrell's thing. And I hate to say this on something that's recorded, but I don't necessarily like that style of the way he teaches. But he did say one thing that I, that I, I didn't agree with, but I had to agree with because it was so simple. He said, make a Google spreadsheet and just save it to a favorite or bookmark and leave it open all day long unless you're working on another project. So as soon as you close out your browser or you know whatever you're working on, open that back up and have the top 30 people that you're trying to list or he was talking about clients, but we should probably do that for our agents because our, our um, what's the board? Um, Total wealth brain chart. fart. Wealth chart. Yeah, our wealth chart doesn't have enough room for all the people we're talking to, right? But that spreadsheet, you could probably fit 50, 60, 70 people on it that'll fit in your screen. So I kind of liked that idea. I mean, I mean that, that, is the, that is the concept of the wealth chart. I mean, I, I would have to imagine, I have to ask Rob, you know, if that was his vision for it, but keeping the wealth chart in front of you and always having it there is just like keeping your list of hot buyers and sellers with you on, or in front of you at all times, right? Like yeah. I always coach agents on our team. I mean, they have to have their list of the top, you know, 10 clients they're working with on them. I prefer a, like a handwritten list, like in their pocket, but like you want it, some people are like, I got to do it digitally. But I think there's something about actually having it physically on paper versus digital. Like William said, he's got his pad. I have my list up on the wall that I stare at. And every time I talk to David Golden, he says he has his list on the wall that he stares at. That's something about staring at people's names that you're like, okay, I'm this. It's like, in his bathroom. When he takes a poop, he stares at that chart. I hope my name's not on the chart anymore. It's still there. It's just a different color now. It's on a different one. <laughs> it's more of a picture of you. <laughs> Call to concern for the weird. Um, I love it. So it was, there was something else we were texting about. What was it? Um, uh, oh, the team communication, I think, is still. All right, well, let's, let's talk team communication. So, so first define it. When you say team communication, what do you mean? communicating better with your organization. Like I have over 700 now, so it's all mass text, mass email and posting. Um, but I think it's brutally crucial that you communicate with your first couple lines, uh, at least levels one and two, every single week. Just touch bases, send a text, do something. How can I support you? What do you need to learn? What do you want to learn? 
you know, last week we talked about this. How's it going? How's it going? Because every time I don't do it, something bad happens. And every time I do it, something good happens. It's really amazing. And and then I was working on my first line the other day, and I, I realized that one of the per people I sponsored, I hadn't talked to in months. I'm like, oh, that's. And then when I did get on the phone, something bad was happening, <laughs> you know, because I waited too long to fix it, and then it might have been too late to repair it. So I think that you know we should do the mass text, mass communication. Make sure you're tagging your team in the posts and EXP pros that are important, the training, the podcast, remind them about this podcast. I mean, I spend thousands of dollars on this thing, you guys, please use it, you know? Um, and it's important that we, that we just support them because at a normal company, they're getting a lot more support from their office managers, their brokers, and they have a little more of a social life. Us that are on this call, we talk all the time and we're like, yeah, we're like, bros and we hang out and but a lot of agents are lonely out there they don't have any help they don't have any support and we're their only support and sometimes we think we're giving support but we're really not like i'm like i post in exp pros all the time everybody's like I, I forget that's even there mike i'm like i'm so butthurt over it and it's like it hurts my ego but at the same time they're like i got better things to do than look at your little facebook group you know i'm like how could that be true i live for that group right like, <laughs> and then i look at the group and there's like you know 500 and something people, 100 people aren't even in my line. So there's 400, there's 300 people missing. And as much as I tell everybody, put them in the group, help communicate, help them learn. People still don't put their people in the group. I mean, that's our one chance at getting people to get some information, you know, like, because nobody else is using their Facebook group. ESP Pros is it's not being used much, but it's the only one being used. So it's like, everybody needs to be supported and they will drift they start hanging out with a couple people from their old office or somebody that recently went to a new company and they're not recruiting. They don't have any revenue share. They only have a couple hundred bucks in stock that doesn't invest for three years. Anyways, they're gladly willing to walk away. They don't use the training. They don't use KV core. They don't use breakthrough brokers. So they're like, why am I here? You know, and people join people. Remember when you got them to join, they joined because of you and they joined because of all the stuff we told them. We have coaching, we have events, we have, you know, we're a team, we're always there to support each other. And when they don't feel that, they're like, eh, you know, it was worth a shot. I tried it and it's okay if I leave, I'm not really walking away from anything. So, so is a, you know, a regular text message enough? Is it a phone call? What do you, what do you think builds that? Cause it's something different for everyone, I think, right? I would, I would, I would automatically always go to a Facebook message or a text message or a bomb bomb text message. That is the very best thing. Hey, how can I support you? What do you want to learn this week? You know, there's so much going on. What, what do you want to learn? I mean, our company keeps getting better. Are you watching everything? And then they're like, no, what's happened? Oh, well, did you hear we recruited 50 independent brokerages? That's a big thing. Do you know anybody? You know, whatever. You know, hey, we got a new KV core trainer. Hey, we got, hey, they, hey, are you using your Maxa? Hey, whatever. <laughs> you know, like, I like that. Yeah. What do you want to learn this week? Because I've had people check in with me mm -hmm. like, how can I support you? My answer is, I have no idea. Like, right. Like, right. Like, don't you get that a lot? Like, people check in with you guys. Do you ever have someone say, "How do you support you?" And you're like, "I don't know. I don't know what I need." Right. But I like, what can you learn? Or yeah, yeah that was who a great do you question. want me to talk to for you? Who do you want me to talk to for you? They love that. They're like, "Oh, you know what? I am talking to this girl. Maybe it would be cool." But they're like, "I don't want to bug you. I know you're busy." No, that's what I'm here for. Really? Okay. Yeah. Will you talk to Lisa this Friday? Yeah. Yeah. Totally. I did a call yesterday at seven in the morning. I did one the day before at eight in the morning for the, the uh, Midwest guys. And like, I'm, I'm making mountains move for, to get on these calls with people. And they're like seventh level, eighth level. I'm like, Jesus guys, you know, so I don't know. They just need to know that we're here for them. That, that is true. I, every time I, uh, every time I reach out and say, Hey, who can I talk to for you? Who, who do you have? If it's not a media answer within a couple of days, I always end up having, Hey, actually there is someone that you could talk to. That, that does help, just reminding people. It's just like real estate. Who do you know that might need my help in real estate? And it's as corny as that is, but half the time you ask, they're like, oh, you know what? My neighbor's thinking of selling. Great, can I have their number? Sure. You're like, Jesus, what if I didn't ask? And it's the same thing. Mm -hmm. But we just got to remember, if we can start getting them just a thousand or two a month in revenue share, they're not going anywhere. Even if they hate you, they're not going anywhere. So we got to help them. We got to help them build. Right. And if you guys are new to the XP, if you're not there, we need to get you a thousand dollars a month in revenue share, a couple thousand dollars a month in revenue share. Because that's right. what it's supposed to feel fun. <laughs> mm -hmm. It is. And then you get 
Then it gets 5,000 months, you're like, ooh. Then you hit 10,000 months, you're like, oh, this is real. This is cool. Yeah, we're oh, yeah. seven days in or whatever, and I'm at 10 grand already. That's an awesome feeling. I'm not switching companies. <laughs> 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 There's no way. Do you, do you have the thought every month, I'm like, maybe it's not going to go up this month. And then every month it keeps, like, it comes back in. Every month I'm just like, maybe revenue share is not going to come in this month. And then it does. Do you ever have that thought? For sure, through COVID, I thought it was going to go down by 50%. It went down by like 1%. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. Like everybody was not allowed to be selling homes in April, but yet everybody sold a home or two in April. It's like, and it doesn't take a lot, right? You only need a few sales to make a pretty good sizable check. Like if three of your people sell a $500,000 house, you're like, you're doing pretty good. Like you're getting a couple grand. It doesn't take a lot, which is insane. Well, they agree. Mm -hmm. What questions do you guys have on team communication? I and mean, I know all of you guys have different sizes of revenue share groups at this point, um, or organizations or whatever you want to call it. But, and so if you have a smaller group, I mean, it's still build the habits of keeping in touch with them now, right? If you have a larger group, it gets, when you get, you know, 700 people like Mike, there are different ways to do it. What, what questions do you guys have? What do you want to learn? I'm using Mike's question. Yeah, what do you want to learn this week, guys? I love that question. <laughs> I love that question. Um, the, the things that I need, I, I've already got, and, and I got from, from what you guys shared today too. So oh. I don't know, Paul, what do you think? What uh, could we no, improve? I, I've got so much so far as well. And uh, the questions that you will asked William in the beginning were, were very helpful for me as well. So okay. I've, I've got a lot so far. So then I'll, I'll add one more thing then, uh, which is something that came from the book, Building an Empire, but it always sticks with me especially when I listen to guys who, and women who've built very large revenue share groups um, or organizations, they always seem to say the same thing or in different words, they're always promoting. They're always promoting something, right? That's all you're literally doing is just your, your professional promoter. Or maybe they came from beach money. I don't know. There's all these books that say the same thing with different words. So if you're just promoting, right? Once you're, if you're doing team communication, you're promoting the tools and systems that we have at eXp that will help them succeed. If someone never plugs into anything, like Mike said, they have no connection to the company, it's very unlikely they'll stay forever. But our goal is to continue to promote different things until we find one that actually clicks for them, right? Maybe it wasn't KV Core, maybe it wasn't the training, maybe it wasn't this, but then Maxa was great. Or maybe it's, you know, Breakthrough Broker, whatever it is, there's something that, that does click for them. Um, same thing when you're talking back to follow-up, William. If you're looking for uh, you know, what you should promote to someone as they're in your follow-up list, you're still always promoting things. Sometimes you're just checking in to see how they're doing, but sometimes you're promoting, maybe at this point with some of these people that have sat on this for a while, you're promoting a three-way call. You don't call it a three-way call, but you're promoting, hey, if I could get you on the phone talking to someone who X, Y, Z, right, did this thing you thought was cool, right, would that be helpful for you? So you're promoting getting on a, on a Zoom with one of your, uh, your partner's mentors or coaches. You just, if you think about it in that context, do you guys ever think about yourself that way? If you're always, you're just, the, the people who are the most successful are the best promoters. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, That's kind of what we were talking about yesterday. Like I, so? I said to the guys, um, I said to them, you know, who, who are we talking to right now that we can connect with Yorkman, Marlo, Brent Gove? I'm like, who do we need to match up with these guys? I might not be the guy to talk to, but we have people that they can talk to that are living proof that this works. Yeah. I love it. And even using this call as an example, we don't heavily promote this call every week. I often think, Mike, we should promote it more. Um, mm -hmm. But I, don't, I always worry I'm gonna, we're going to burn people out trying to be like, get on this call every week, get this call, because not everyone as, is as committed to Asian attraction. They're not. And that's okay with me. I know a lot of people, they are selling houses first and foremost, and that's what we want to support. We're a real estate company. Mm -hmm. But those of us who really like the Asian attraction piece, um, I mean, this is, this is my jam. This is Mike's, this is your jam. That's why you're here. But the weeks we do promote this thing, like when we had the whole, you know, all the EXP support team on here, we had probably like, I don't know, I think close to a hundred people on, on the line. Right. So it's all just about learning to promote. How do you promote? What do you do? It's like anything else. If you're, if you have the time and you're just sitting around and it pops up in your calendar, you're like, Oh wow, check it out. You know, and you'll click on every other week or so. And that's good. And everything that we talk about applies to real estate sales or any sales anyways. Mm -hmm. So all the scripts we use, 
are, are perfect for real estate. You know, it's the same thing you'd say to a buyer or seller, just twist a couple words and it's exactly the same. But it's like, I, I was promoting something the other day and I don't remember how the conversation, oh, somebody said, hey, how much is uh, Ylopo? And I said, it's pretty expensive, but I love it. Have you, are you using your KV Core website? And they're like, I've never even seen my website. I'm like, what are you using now? It's some real geeks or something for like 500 bucks a month. I go, can I see that? And I looked at it. It was no different than the KV Core website. So again, on a Zoom, did a screen share, showed them where their website was, and they go, holy crap, all that's there, customizable, already connected to KV Core. Nobody knows. Like, I think I was at this company six months before I knew how awesome the website you get for free is connected to KV Core, all ADX driven. Like, some things like that. I mean, who do, right? Promote that. You know, that's, that's a really good thing to bring up the tools and the technology. Well, KV Core is huge. I mean, I remember when, when Brent was telling me about his brokerage, his, his main focal point was conversion, who later turned into KV Core. And there's so much that KV Core can bring us. And I'm willing to bet none of us on this call actually know 100% of what KV Core can do. Not even half. Mm -hmm. Because it does that much. Those be known advertising dudes that have that class, I was looking at their classes the other day, promoting it to somebody. And I was like, oh my God, if I could only do half that, I'd be rich. You know, you could take an average Joe agent right off the street and make them tons of money if they just use a few of those features, just a few. It's yeah. crazy. And, and I'm actually using that, by the way, now as part of, a, uh, of an, an agent attraction hook as well. So people that are, um, you know, if I know that growing their business, especially on the buyer side is important, or if they run a small team, um, I say, look, you get KV Core with eXp. You don't have to switch to it, but if you want to switch to it, I've got a couple of guys that are probably two of the smartest guys I've ever known in terms of using KV Core to generate Facebook leads. They're generating leads at $3 a piece and actually higher intent leads that are ready to buy, uh, you know, a lot sooner than the average Facebook lead. I have no idea how they do it, but they did create a course that it's like 50 bucks for a month. They get access and you can go step by step by step through exactly what they charge all these other uh, agents, you know, a thousand bucks to, to do it for them. They just open up their playbook to show people how to do it. So you combine that with KV Core, which comes along with being part of EXP, um, might be a game changer for your business. All right. I'm curious. That's a, that's a really neat tool. It, even though it's not part of eXp, just giving them the resources and pointing them in the right direction, I find is really good for getting people curious. Yeah, and Brent Gove's script, by the way, is really good for that. He goes, don't you ever wonder how people sell hundreds of homes a year? Well, this is it. This is really it, and it's at your fingertips. And you're like, wow. <laughs> you know? like, there's no secrets. This is it. It's expensive crap, but it's not expensive for you. Imagine that. Something that really works, it's not expensive. <laughs> I like this is expensive mm -hmm. crap and it's not expensive for you. Right. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> Just as. Awesome. All right. I'm going to put, I'm going to put you on the spot, Craig. So you're, you're new, you're newer with the company. What, what's uh you have any uh, action steps, takeaway? Like where are you at with all this? As far as attraction? Yeah. I brought my team over. I had a call this morning with a girl who's looking to come over and bring four people from her brokerage. So I'm meeting with her tomorrow. Awesome. Uh, I mean, I'm just, I mean, I've, I've, I'm always recruiting. I was always recruiting for the team. Now I'm just taking it to another level. I'm recruiting for the team. And if they're not a fit for the team, they're going to the brokerage side and I'm just running with it. I mean, I, I know, I know you're a recruiter. That's why I was curious. So if you guys don't know, Craig, Craig was running an indie brokerage before coming to eXp and uh, I know you're a recruiter. That's why I'm curious to see how all this is. Your mind is working, trying to connect the eXp you know, playbook and system with how you've been doing things for years and how they, uh, how they combine. So love yeah, it. I mean, the only thing I changed is I'm, I'm still recruiting for the team, you know? So obviously they'll, you know, I'm building that side of it, but now I'm reaching out to strategic people in my area that I could never recruit before because they produce at a level of me or higher and having those conversations. I love it. I love it. <laughs> Henry's just adding people left and right to the group. <laughs> <laughs> He's an action taker. There you go. <laughs> My people all have better be in this group, and I realized there was two. two Were we there. missing a bunch of people? You know, Craig, one yeah. thing I was going to, well, we should talk about it for the good of the group. Getting buy-in from your team is absolutely paramount, too. Um, I made the mistake, and I think Jesse and I talked about it on a panel the other day, similar thing where 
where I was just so busy, like trying to get the agents on my team to produce, I didn't get their buy-in for the company. So they weren't recruiting and they weren't recruiting to the team. So now I'm having special meetings, training meetings, just with my team privately to show them like, hey guys, we're hustling, we're selling homes, we're a real estate company first, but don't forget, like look at all this stuff, you know? And, and they're like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm actually sharing my revenue share with them and other people's revenue share. You know, I'll say, hey, there's somebody that we recruited a couple of weeks ago. There's their first check for, you know, 400 bucks, whatever, one of the Seattle girls. And uh, I'm like, look, you guys, this that's that's a buyer's agent on a team that recruited a person to their team. You guys, like, don't forget about this. You know, take some time to learn about agent attraction. Watch a couple of videos. And if you understand it and it clicks, you'll start making money. And, you know, you guys are always begging, like, you'll take a $200,000 home light deal that you get net 500 bucks on. What if you could get 500 bucks every month by not doing anything? You know, it's like, oh yeah, okay, okay. You know, I got a couple of people on my team right now even reading Building an Empire. Like, they're getting into it a little bit more. You know, so, it's pretty cool. I do cool. love that book. Have, have you guys have read that book? I'm part way through it. All right. It, it was it a loss. And now I'm doing uh, fanatical prospecting. Oh, cool. Yeah. That have just you... changed somebody's life on my team too, fanatical prospecting. I love that book. And then, um, the other thing that's working is, um, oh God, I just had a brain fart again. Um, uh, 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 I give up. It'll come to me. <laughs> I got we'll 15 minutes before I go on this webinar and these, like Carrie's got some of the top people in the world on this thing and I don't even know how to follow these people. <laughs> just be you. You don't follow your, your Mike Bjorkman. Just be really honest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. right uh, so anyways uh, what was i gonna say uh building an empire I and then know. we mentioned fanatical prospecting ah, that's okay i'll, I'll keep yeah. rolling I mean, we're, we're coming to the end of the call for today anyway. So the, the, the whole thing is the reason I keep promoting building an empire and again, notice promoting is because every time I reread or listen to part of that, it gets me excited again. And so much of this is just being excited. Like when you're reaching out to these people, Craig, that produce at the same level or higher than you, do you notice that the state that you are in when you are excited or when you're like feeling confident totally changes the way the conversation goes? Oh, absolutely. Like, it's 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 the, it's the same thing with with you know what we teach the agents when you set an appointment keep going because you'll set two and three and four you know we have those crappy days and you're doing nothing you get nothing when you're when you're on a roll it just it just exudes through your body yeah a lot of momentum yeah it's yeah. very real I love it Mike we wish you well I know you got to go dude right you got to I should probably put a collared shirt on or something. <laughs> No pants though. That's that's the best part of Zoom is you don't even have to put pants on. I know. I was gonna say you guys are wearing pants. <laughs> <laughs> Flippy floppies only. Like how do you get in this thing? Oh, um all right. I'm gonna bail. I'm gonna get some water and get my computer charged. You guys Quite are guys, awesome. awesome. Have a beautiful day. You. you can Thank finish you. it up there, guys. Have a good one, man. All right, see you, Mike. Bye guys. You guys got anything else? We good for the week? I think we're good. All right. Let's do it. Good to see you I'll guys. I'll next week. Yep. Stay plugged Thanks in. So if, much. If, yeah. if you have people that you want me to talk to, right? Who do you have? Who do you have they want me to talk to? I'll finish with Mike's question. Who do you want me to talk to? You, huh? Set me up those talks to people. Oh, Jesse, you're definitely on my roster. All people right. that I'm going to hook up with. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right, guys. Have a good week. Thank hey, you. Jesse, I, I, actually, I got a quick question I just thought of. Go for it. Is it better to reach out to a bunch of people via text initially, or should you have those one-on-one -on -one conversations via phone? Very good question. I strong, well, what are you saying via text? Are you saying something about EXP? Or are you saying, um, are you saying just, it's, hey, I want to connect with you? Yeah, I mean, it's probably going to be a conversation opener. You're not, I'm not going to go for the jugular you know, right. first, first message. But I mean, just, just to, is it better to go wide or go deep? It depends with, with a person on or the nature people. of your relationship. So if we're going to set up a one-time live webinar, like just for your people, right? That's what they, they talk about in Building an Empire. It's that, that your initial launch. Then 
and you just don't have the bandwidth to call everybody, yeah, a text is better to be like, hey, I made some big changes. I'd love to get you on a webinar, you know, to, to talk about what I've done if you're curious to see. Uh, and you could, I'll help you craft the message for what you would say for your people. There's some general scripts that we can use. However, I mean, I think the phone is, is far better because they can hear your excitement and enthusiasm. But if you know them and they're going to trust you from a text and it's better than nothing, dude, the text is better than nothing. I just think if you're going to text blast out a bunch of people, hey, I moved to EXP, you want to talk about it? You're probably going to get a lot of, nah, I'm good. Versus if you got them on the phone and you said, look, you're not going to believe this. Um, I actually ended up changing my brokerage after years uh, over to EXP. I am just obsessed with this. And I, I, I don't know if you think I'm crazy, but I'd love to get your opinion. Would you check this out and give me your opinion? You're going to get a very different response as a voice to voice than you will via text, I think. What about you guys? Have you guys done much texting versus calling? What have you, what have you seen? Um, I was calling, calling everyone. It was mostly one-on-ones and um, people that I really wanted to bring to my organization. So I really focused on them. Um, even even when we, we had our event here, which we had like, Paul was at 90, 80, 80, 90, almost 100 people. Mm -hmm. And those people were each called individually. Yeah. It took some time, but... It worked. Yeah, I think for the sake of time, Craig, though, if you're like, look, this is time sensitive, because I know in your area, I mean, things are, things are blowing up. There's a lot of EXP stuff. So if it's on yeah. people's radar and they don't know that you have switched yet, right, then yeah, text is better than nothing. Well, I, I guess, I guess, I mean, I know the answer, right? So I've got probably like 50 people that are, I would say are more of acquaintances, not like uh -huh. I've got like a solid relationship, but it's more than like, you know, a, a cold call. Yeah. Um, I, I know the one-on-one -on -one would be more effective. And then I, what I fear is I don't want to send a text and, and close the door. Right. A potential conversation down the road, but I don't necessarily have the bandwidth to make 50 separate calls at this very moment. I wanted to get off as quick as possible, you know? Right. So, so I would, I mean, I would see how many you get through in the next week or two. And then you, at that point you can send off a text. I would just keep the text pretty open though, as opposed to, you don't want to think that you're, like you said, you're going for the juggler via text and close that door for something you don't really know. Right. Cool. Is that, Okay. Yeah, yeah. It probably confirms exactly what you thought, right? Yeah, it is. I just was hoping I could leverage some technology <laughs> and shorten the timeline there. If, if you keep it vague, right, keep it vague and get them curious, you can use text and say, hey, jump on this webinar. I want my business parts. I want, to, I want you to see what I've got And would you on. go for the webinar or would you go for the Brent and Go video? Um, I would... To, again, depends on how you know them, but I would probably, I like, I like live webinars. I like them, even though the, the Brent Go video is good. There's something about being part of something live and actually having to come to commit to something to see it, that if you've got a lot of people and there's good energy there. Otherwise, um, I think the, I think a phone call, like I think a phone call versus a text of, it's just hard to be persuasive in a text. You can do a video text, right? Hey, you know, I am obsessed with what's going on in our industry and obsessed with this webinar. I've probably watched this thing like a hundred times. Would you like, are you open to watching it with me? You could send them. And if they say, you know, is it the IXP? I mean, be straightforward, right? Tell them it is. At that point, call them, get them on the phone. But you can see who's responding or not. That might help you filter for leverage some of your time. Okay, cool. Jesse, what's the uh, website that some folks use or sign up for that it's like, your own uh, marketing website, whatever, EXP. Oh, let's see here. It you, is, you use that? I have not used it, but it is, let me see what it's called. Agent Builder Pro. Is that the one you're talking about? Yeah, yeah. I noticed our, uh, yesterday I was just poking around something and our Ohio Brokers um, page popped up. It, was, it looks pretty good. Agent, uh, Builder Pro. Agent Builder Pro. Including your personal personalized agent attraction landing page website, nineteen bucks a month. I don't. That's it's got an eight minute EXP video. It's actually a pretty good video. Yeah. I mean, if you've got a large enough list, Craig, and you're recruiting to your team because they don't EXP doesn't want you, you know, cold blast, cold text blasting thousands of people, obviously. Sure. But if you actually know them in your relationship or you're recruiting to your team, you can text off people. I just want you making contact. Oh, for sure. They, uh, Craig, what else are you doing to recruit to your team? What do you mean by what else? 
Yeah, I mean, are you just calling people, or do you run in ads, or? Uh... Yeah, so we've got I've got ads on uh, on Indeed. Um, I just I just signed up with a company that's doing some calls for me. Uh, I use uh, Market View Broker, which is through Showing Time, like Broker Matrix. So I'm kind of uh, for the team. I'm looking at a certain demographic of people, and uh, usually I'll, I'll start with those guys with initial text just to kind of feel them out, and then I'll follow up with a phone call. Mm -hmm. The Market View Broker, that's the Showing Time, right? Yeah, it's like, and that's like. I want to say it's like half the price or a third of the price of broker matrix. Yeah. And it seems to be pretty, pretty similar. I was just trying to sign up for that. I'm thinking maybe I can't get access to it because I'm not a broker. I'm only an agent. I don't know. I got to double check. That I, I don't know. I don't see why there'd be a limitation, but I'm not sure. Yeah. Interesting. I don't know the answer to that. Deal. Do you know, Jesse, do you know if our, our area brokers give access to broker matrix to? I don't believe they do, but I've never asked either. Okay. That would be cool, wouldn't it? I, I know there's other large companies that have like that setup where you have like a regional broker that they will give access to their agents, but I wasn't sure. Yeah, I never asked. You can go to the broker, we can ask. I love it. Yeah, Jesse, this has been awesome, man. Thank you for having us on this call. Thank you for being here, Will and Paul, yeah. Michael. Thanks okay. so much. That was fantastic. Thank you. It, if nothing else, it's good to connect and see your faces and remind yourself that other people are doing focusing on attraction. This is working. Mm -hmm. This really is working. Where are, you, where are you guys all at? What 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 area? States or? Toronto. Canada. Uh, Toronto, yeah. I'm in Cleveland, Ohio. Okay. Yeah, that, that's one thing. That's one thing I will tell you guys. One last tip before I wrap up. As a strategy for agent attraction, I would focus on expanding to a few areas outside of your hometown, like start in the area where you know agents that are local, but you want to consciously, you're really trying to build agent attraction into a big revenue stream, get a couple agents in other areas and other cities. You don't need a lot because once you get a couple of other cities, that'll start to grow to other areas as well. But mm. I, I haven't checked lately, but my, my register group is in, you know, 16 or 18 states. I think Mike is in like 40 states now or something like that. And as you have things like COVID come up, that also helps give you some stability to your revenue share. Because even if in one market sales go down, you've got people all over in all these different markets that there's different things happening in every area. I, I think that was, mm -hmm. it just happened because that's how I, that's where I know people over the years from real estate was all across the country. But I think you can strategically go seek out agents in other areas. I heard one really good script um, from uh, at one of these XP, XP events. If you're looking to get people in other areas and you don't know people in different areas, uh, call a relative or a friend that you know in another, another part of the country. Like everyone on this call has a relative or a friend somewhere in another part of this country, right? I imagine. Call that person who doesn't have to be in real estate and say, hey, you know, I'm wondering who do you know locally in your area that is a fantastic realtor? Get that person's name and contact info. Then you call that agent and you say, so, you know, I, I was asking around for a local realtor. So-and-so, my cousin, Bobby, whatever, right? Gave me your name and said you were fantastic. I'm just looking, you know, looking for partners in other areas and parts of the country. Want to see, uh, you know, if you're open to chatting, love to learn about, a little bit about your business and see if we can connect. If the person says, heck no, I'm not interested. Well, frankly, they're going to be a pain in the butt and not someone you want to talk to anyway. But if they're open-minded, then there you go. Now you've got another contact that came through a third party. So because your cousin introduced you or gave you their name, they're probably going to take your call and want to talk to you. And you make a few of those, you can end up getting people in different areas. I thought that was a fantastic technique. Has, has that worked for you ever, Jesse? I haven't done it. I, I have some people on my list. I haven't even called through my list. Um, yeah. Actually, no, I take it back. I did. As I was sitting in the, se in the session and the person said, do this now or else you probably won't do it. So I immediately did it. I texted my cousin. I got someone's name in New Jersey. I called the guy and we had a couple conversations. And uh, yeah, it's a, he didn't join EX EXP yet, right? But he was open to the idea and he's part of my, he is one of my long-term follow-up people. Cool. He was happily open to chat with me. He's like, yeah, I'll check it out. Nice. What, what, to, awesome. to that point, what, what does your long-term follow-up look like? Like how, how, what's the frequency? What are the conversations? Once a month with people who are, you know, not really active with EXP or not really like if the idea of EXP, I still once a month just connect and I rarely even talk EXP. I'm just checking in, seeing how the business is going. Every once in a while, I'll put in something EXP related. For anyone who is actively like they were, they're, you know, they're thinking about it. It's every one or two weeks, depending on how busy I am. And I'll do this not just for my frontline people, but someone like I've been talking to one guy for, gosh, it's going on eight months. Who is he? Would be my 
my third my third uh, third level. Someone else brought him, someone, someone who brought in someone. He said, "Hey Jesse, talk to this guy." I just we connected, and I just keep following up. And so, do you have some type of call to action or something you're promoting, or you're just like like, "Hey, I'm calling to follow up." Uh, it depends. It depends on the name. I, I wish I could say that in a systematized way. I just know the nature of the relationship. So typically, I'm just checking in to see how they're doing, right? If it's if there is something of note that happened with EXP, like William said, stock price went back over 10. Um, if it's been, I'll look at, because I'm usually doing it via Facebook Messenger or text. I'm not calling these people because frankly, they don't want to talk to me, right? Well, just, okay, that, that's what I was getting at. So you're not actually making a phone call then at that point? No. Because okay. I, 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 can, I can sense it through the phone. Like they're, 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 they're I mean, they, they can smell it, you know? No, they, they don't. They, they don't. Why be disingenuous? I just, and that way I, I just, I look at my text message chain and I get a sense for, how they're responding, how they're not, when the last time I talked to EXP was, and I feel like, okay, I need to bring it around to EXP. I'll find something EXP related, but generally I'm just talking about things in their business. I mean, heck, someone just sent me something on the shuttle launch that was scrubbed yesterday. And, you know, SpaceX is flying to space. Right. I might send a little link to anyone that I, that, you know, who doesn't think that's cool? I might be like, hey, did you see the shuttle launch happening tomorrow? I Do didn't know until someone sent it to me. Do you segment your Facebook friends list into potential recruits? I do. So they can be top of mind? I do. I, I have a tag that says hot, uh, hot EXP and I drop them into that. And then I make certain posts that are just to those or I can go through and look through that list. Absolutely. Cool. I do. Yeah. Cool. All right, guys. Enjoy your awesome. week. I love these questions because I see I told you, Craig, I know where your mind's going. Dude. <laughs> Craig's going to build a better system than, than any of us have. He's just like, right, this is it. This is how we're doing it. All right, guys. Enjoy your week. Awesome. Have, bye guys. Thanks Talk guys. See you guys. Take care.